Yo, what's up you guys? So a lot of news just dropped in Pokemon Go. We're getting a lot of new Pokemons, a lot of new shinies, new events, new PvP information. We're getting some new movesets and some old returning movesets as well. A lot of things to break down, so let's get started. Alright, before we begin, just want to let you guys know, my name is Tong, aka The Last Hot Sauce. I do all things related to Pokemon news, tips, tricks, and vlogs. If you like those type of videos, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a thing. Alright, so let's kick off the video with the event schedule for the rest of December. So just a quick reminder, from today until December 31st, you're going to be able to get Shadow Zapdos from Giovanni. So make sure you get on that. Afterwards, December 14th and December 15th is going to be a community day. And then the day after that, December 16th, is when all the Pokemon in eggs are going to be switched up. Afterwards, from December 17th until January January 7th, yeah, January 7th, we're going to get the last of the legendary trios, Verizion. I hope I'm saying that right. And then December 20th to December 23rd, we're going to have Lugia and Ho-Oh. Back into raids, yay, they're back again, but I guess for you new players who didn't get a chance to get a shiny Lugia or shiny O, that's gonna be your chance. December 24th until January 1st, we're gonna get the holiday event, and as you guys can probably guess already, we're gonna have increased ice type Pokemon, we're gonna have ice type Pokemon in raids, in eggs, in quests, and we have new information about new shinies. So, Quails, the data miner, has found a shiny Stantler and a shiny Obama Snow. Looks pretty cool. Looking forward to that. And I'm trying to get my shiny deli bird. I didn't get it last year. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna try to get that. Oh, and we have a new Pikachu hat and a new Pikachu hat. It's like a little beanie, basically. And in the middle of the holiday event on December 28th, we're gonna have an eight hour ice event. The only thing that we know about is that Reggie Ice is gonna be returning to raise. Maybe just an eight hour day for just Reggie Ice because I'm not sure how else they're gonna to add to the holiday event. So look forward to that. I'm kind of sad because Kimbo Park recently became a Stantler nest because the nest migration happened today and all the Machops are gone and it got replaced with Stantler and the shiny variant has not been released yet. It would have been cool, but oh well. Oh, and speaking of shinies and holiday events, Quails, the data miner, found a shiny Wumper. We're gonna have new hats as well. It's kind of like a holiday hat, I guess. It looks like a birthday hat almost, but it can very well be like a holiday cap, like an elf, whatever. And we have a shiny Zigzagoon that's found in a data with a shiny Lanoon. All right, so speaking of shinies and new hats added to the game, we recently found that Niantic has added 66 new Gen 5 Pokemons to the data. Looking forward to it. And you know what? I'll be honest with you guys. I don't know too much about Gen 5, I, you know, I just, it's not my generation. So if you guys are a Gen 5 fan or you guys looking forward to something that is in Gen 5, comment below, let me know, or at least help me out on like what to look forward to. Alright, so moving on to most exciting part I think about all this news in Pokemon Go is that we found new buddy system items which hints at the new AR Oculus system that Niantic has been working on for a while now. So I think for like two years. Well, I don't know how long they've been working on it, but the news just came out like two years ago. So the items that they found is under Souvenir. Not sure exactly how they're going to be used, but the items include a beach glass, cactus fruit, chalky stone, flower fruit, lone earrings, which I think is in the system already, marble, mushrooms, pinecone, pretty leaf, skipping stone, small bouquet, sketchy spring. I wonder what we're going to use that for. Torn ticket, which I think I think it's for events so like if you like go into like a go fest and then you go in there you get checked in you get like a torn ticket as like i don't know as a guess tropical fruit with tropical shells no idea how that's gonna be used but it's under souvenir along with that is emotion so i'm assuming because this is for the pokemon buddy system that they, that they are developing uh, it's kind of like the emotion of the Pokemon and I think you might have to take care of it kind of like a Tamagotchi if you guys know what that is. Alright so what makes this part so exciting in my opinion is that there's kind of like the fruits of Niantic labor where they're working on the AR Oculus platform even further. So if you guys are not familiar with the AR Oculus platform it's kind of like how we have the AR Plus where when you throw a Pokemon out if you're too close the Pokemon is too big and then you can back out and move around in a 360 circle around the Pokemon. To move further deeper into the development is basically your phone's ability to read the environment around them. Like if you put a Pikachu on this chair I'm sitting on it can be the same size as a chair which is supposed to be like how Pikachu is supposed to be like in real life or at least in the cartoon. If a Pokemon or an item uh, moves behind an object is going to be behind an object. As you guys can see from this comparison of what Nanatech has showcased, this is regular AR and this is AR Oculus where it is interacting with the environment around them. And on December 5th, 2019, Nanatech partnered up with Qualcomm Technologies slash Snapdragon and basically Qualcomm Technology is, is a microchip's 
is the hardware in your phones that we're using today. Snapdragon is the software program and the processing power to be able to utilize AR development. And it's great that they partner with Qualcomm and Snapdragon because that's only going to yield more exciting AR technology possibility for Pokemon Go. Hopefully, they're able to really mainstream what they showcase at the AR Playground. In the AR Playground that they showcased at, in Japan, Tokyo a few years ago, people who took out the Pokemon for AR pictures are able to see other people's Pokemon. I think in the video, you're only able to see one other or two other people. And so to me, that's really exciting to see everyone's Pokemon out interacting with each other. The most exciting part about this whole thing is be able to PvP or battle each other in a real Pokemon world where people can see each other's Pokemon in AR form and the spectators can like look on with the phone as like a Google Glass and pretty much see the whole battle. But I digress. That's why I think it's exciting for AR Oculus development. Let me know what you guys think if you guys are excited. I can go on about it for a little while now, but I made a video on it on the partnership with Exomatic Gaming and what it means to Niantic and Pokemon Go. Uh, I did it like last year and yeah, check it out. It's a really good video. Anyways, so speaking of PvP, let's talk about the new movesets, the new development of the PvP platform for Niantic and the new edition slash old edition of movesets. I'm not gonna go through the whole thing, just a few highlights because some of you guys don't like PvP. In fact, a lot of you guys don't like PvP. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I just want to just briefly go over it for the people who are interested in it. And you might be interested too because they have ranking systems now that go, go through seasons from 1 to 10. And it's safe to say that the higher the ranking, you most likely will probably get like more item drops from gems or more items from raids. So if you do decide to get in PvP, it might be beneficial for you down the long run. Anyway, so this Gold League system is going to go from Great League, Ultra League, and Master League, which is great because the Surf League tournaments only focus on Great League, which is the best because it has the most variety. But, you know, people want to use the highest CP Pokemon that they work so hard for uh, in Ultra and Master League. And like I said before, it's gonna go through seasons and it's gonna have a ranking from 1 to 10. Each win against the trainer is going to count as a point to go up to rank 10, and each loss is gonna take away points. When you reach up to rank 10, you can't move down no matter how many times you lose afterwards. But again, it's gonna be season, so it's gonna start over every season. So, along with that, something interesting that they're adding to the game, which is attack. You know, when you are using your charge move and your opponent is using a charge move too, how does the game? kind of tell like if you guys press it at the same time. Well, Nantic has added that like whoever has the highest attack stat will be able to use the charge move first. For Great League, it's kind of like a double-edged sword because you want the lowest stat to be attack because it increases the CP too much and you want stamina or HP to be the highest. So you want to basically have the highest HP for Great League before reaching the cap of 1500 and with that being said, you want to get closer to a CP cap and have the most HP, which I just said earlier. But with 100% IV Pokemon, you're able to use a charge move faster if you were to like press it at the same time, or you at least get priority. But with 100%, you won't be able to reach a CP cap as close as other lower IV Pokemon, and you have lower HP. So it's a pick and choose, but it's an interesting dynamic that they're adding. For switching out, it's going to pretty much going to take away any kind of attributes that you acquired during the battle, like any kind of attack boost or defense boost that you that you did for your Pokemon is going to be pretty much negated once you switch out. Same thing for your opponent. So it adds in a new dynamic to like switching Pokemon if you really want to switch out or not. Uh, something to think about, but that's just really cool. Um, they added a new charge move for a lot of Pokemon. I'm just gonna highlight just three of them or four of them. No, just three of them. Uh, first up is Sand Tomb. Sand Tomb is meant for Torterra and Garchomp, which is great because Torterra, although you knows it's Razor Leaf and Frenzy Plant, it can't get to the Frenzy Plant as fast. So having a lower energy cost charge move like Sand Tomb is gonna be great and more useful. Along with that, Garchomp only knows Outrage and something else that's not very good. But having, like I said, a low energy cost charge move is going to be beneficial to Garchomp as well. Aurora Spear for Lucario, it pretty much makes Lucario the highest DPS fighting Pokemon in the game. So that's freaking awesome. And then lastly, we have Kyogre knowing Surf. And thank God they finally added a relevant charge move for Kyogre. Because Kyogre is a legendary Pokemon. You want to be able to use this charge move. And Hydro Pump and Blizzard just takes too much energy. You, you know, you'll be lucky if you use it one time in a battle. 
All right, so with all these updates, the most exciting part about this update system is that we're getting legacy moveset that they took out all the way back from 2016. It's amazing because some of the legacy moves I wasn't able to get, like they took out Dragon Breath for Gyarados like within the first month of, no, not even the first, I think only the first month of release. So not a lot of people were able to get it. So let me read you guys a list of legacy moves that are live now. That's right, right now. Um, I, I tested out for a Polywrath, Gyarados already, and a Dragonite, so you guys can see it right here, it's pretty awesome. But anyways, Arcanine with Flamethrower, Polywrath with Mudshot, Machamp with Cross Chop, which is not like, eh. Golem with Ancient Power, which is great. Gengar with Shadow Claw, amazing. If you have 100% Lick Gengar, I would say don't switch it out, um, but find like a better IV Ghastly and just evolve it and get Shadow Claw. Executor with Confusion. Confusion is very de devastating. Pinsir with Fury Cutter. Yeah, okay, whatever. Gyarados with Dragon Breath and Twister. If you guys have a good Gyarados with Dragon Breath and Twister, it pretty much takes out all Dragonites. It's a beast. Snorlax with Body Slam. Body Slam is annoying with Snorlax because Snorlax is just a great defender overall, and so being able to activate Body Slam for a defending Pokemon in a gym is just gonna do a lot of damage. So, awesome. And the most exciting Pokemon to get a legacy move is Dragon Breath and Dragon Claw. Dragon Breath and Dragon Claw is ridiculously amazing for Dragonite. It does a lot of attack, quick attack for Dragon Breath, and Dragon Claw only requires 35 energy to be activated, so you'll be using charge moves like left and right with that. So having this with Outrage to do like some serious damage, and you can TM all this right now. Although I did try a lot of TMs with Arcanine, I didn't get I didn't get Flamethrower. So I think maybe some of these moves may be uh, launched later on. But for sure, you're able to get Shadow Claw, Confusion, Dragon Breath for Gyarados, and Dragonite, and Dragon Claw for Dragonite. I haven't tried the rest of them because I have no more TM. So. Uh. Yeah. All right, so I teed them this already, but I just want to evolve it to see like if I can get through evolution as well. Uh, what should I do? The hundred percent Magikarp or the shiny Magikarp? Let's try it for my shiny Magikarp. Hopefully, I can get Twister and Dragon Breath out of way. So save me some TMs. Yay! Okay, now I only have one shiny Magikarp left. Come on, give me something good. All right, Dragon Breath and Outrage. So at least I got Dragon Breath. I can probably TM it. Or I can add a new attack for it. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to add a new attack. I'll just team up later. I don't have anything else. Alright, so now let's evolve this Dragonair. Hopefully I can get a Dragonite with Dragon Breath and Dragon Claw. I have a lot of Dragonites already. A lot of 100%. So I just want to do this for you guys. Uh, I got this one in La Mesa. Uh, I don't know this. I kept this one for a while. Mm. Sick. Sick. Cool. Come on. Dragon Breath and Hyper Beam. So it brought back Hyper Beam too for Dragonite, which is like a crappy move too, by the way. All right, well, got a Dragon Breath, Dragonite 100%. I just need to find some Charsiums. God, I'm gonna need a lot of Charsiums. Good luck to you guys. All right, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for all things related to Pokemon Go news, tips, tricks, and vlogs. I'll see you guys all in the next one. Peace out. Okay, it's fine. Is he a PvP potential guy? Uh, yeah, but like, I just want to shine Drifloom. No, I know, but I just meant. Uh, yeah, Drifloom is good. Cause like a, it has a, it's, he has a high CP, high HP. Hey, he just lost 40 grand. <laughs> Start I know. <laughs> no, you work grinding today. To go, to, uh, my, 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 all my hard work. Yeah, it went up. Nice. Went up a lot. Yes. Ooh. 98. Jesus.